Jay and Jess Larris, and Charlemagne the God. They're listening to The Breakfast Club. Thank y'all for being like cultural leaders. You guys are family. The Breakfast Club is where people get the information on the topics, on the artists, and everything like that. I'm winning like that. You guys were nice. Everybody got me all nervous. Why? Like, you guys are going to go on. Let's not go on. Yeah. You're locked into the world's most dangerous moment show. If you want to break this club, you ain't going to bring it. 120 money's going to not come up here. Oh, oh my Jesus. This is what y'all do up here? Ah. That's right. Get up out the beds and listen to the greatest show on earth. Good morning, USA. Yo, 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 yo,
They told you do not look into that sun. They told you don't try to take pictures. And a lot of people did. And because of that, a lot of people's eyes were hurting. They're saying it could cause permanent eye damage. I thought about looking at the sun yesterday, too. And I'll tell you why. Because I figured, like, I was like, man, you know how people always be saying, like, whenever it's an eclipse, you're supposed to get superpowers? Yeah. What if the only way to get superpowers is to look at the sun? And they tell us not to look at it because they don't want us to get superpowers. How would they know? Because they already got them. <laughs> they already got them and they know how to get them and how not to get them. So they tell you, don't look at the sun. Don't look at the sun. Don't look at the sun. Jeez. Did you look? A little peek. <laughs> he looked a little peek. I did. I gave it a little peek. Real dumb. Peak. Already had blind. <laughs> looking all guy. crazy. I gave it a little peek. That's crazy. I gave oh, it a little peek. Okay, no, for real. It is uh, a million three hundred thousand planets that can fit in the um, sun. What are you talking about? <laughs> it's the fact. It's the a, fact. A fact of what? Oh, my gosh. The sun is 864,400 miles. Um, Jess, everybody knows that the sun no, is the largest massive object that. in the solar system. Okay, yeah, massive object makes it massive. But we learned still, that in elementary y'all, school. Y'all didn't know. Yeah, yes, but did. y'all didn't know those numbers. I didn't know. Good. Thank you, Jess. Thank you. Thank you, Jess. Like, I didn't boy, know. What, what I didn't are you know. talking about? I didn't know. This dummy just tried to peek at the sun looking down. Boy. Well, I got superpowers. <laughs> no, <Yeah. don't> now <laughs> I teleported to work this morning. That's yeah. why I got here right at six o'clock. Whatever. You looked up. I was just sitting in the seat. You ain't even noticed. I ain't walk through the door. You'll get out of here. Brad, did I walk through the door? No. Y'all ain't even see. All right. Now Walmart may owe you five hundred dollars, and this is the reason why. This settlement means that Walmart shoppers could be eligible to receive hundreds of dollars in cash. The retail giant is paying out a total of $45 million to settle this class action lawsuit, accusing it of overcharging customers for some groceries. Walmart denies any wrongdoing, but it says that these payouts are in the best interest of customers. So if you bought weighted products like meat, poultry, pork, or seafood, or if you bought bagged citrus fruit between October 2018 and January 2024, you can now file a a claim to get your money back. Here's how you want to do that. You go to walmartweightedgrocerysettlement.com. You can file online or through the mail. If you've kept your receipts, you can qualify for up to $500 back. If not, you can get up to $25 and the deadline to apply is June 5th. If, understandably, you have not kept your receipts for the past five years, you can try to retrieve them on Walmart's website. I'm on there right now. Oh, boy. I'm on Walmart Weighted Grocery Settlement.com. That's right. And you can get five, up to $500. So if you want some of that money, make sure you go to that website and try to get your money ASAP. That's a great little stimmy right there. Mm-hmm. $500, 500 quick dollars from Walmart. That's right. And they probably mm-hmm. owe it to you and you probably don't even know. No. So why not go to Walmart Weighted Grocery Settlement.com and, um, you know, see if they owe you some bread. Yep. And lastly, last night, UConn beat Purdue 75 to 60. Uh, that was their second win uh, they beat uh, in the 2024 National Championship. So, salute to UConn, I the tried. Connecticut Huskies. I tried, guys. It's so boring. It was, right? Oh, my God. Men's college basketball is what women's college basketball used to be. It was I was The first half was like 30 to 36. I'm like, what the hell? It wasn't good at all. This supposed to be the future of the NBA? No, nah, it, wasn't, it wasn't. I'm good. not interested. I, I, tried. I tried. I tried. I tried. I tried. I tried. It was boring. I turned it off. All right. And that is front page news. Now, next hour, we got to tell you about Donald Trump. Um, you know, Donald Trump was against abortion, then he was kind of for abortion. Now he's kind of in the middle. We'll tell you about that. Also, Joe Biden, he's giving you more student loan relief. We'll tell you about that next hour as well. Everybody else, get it off your chest. 800-585-1051. If you need to vent, phone lines are wide open. Again, 800-585-1051. Hit us up right now. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. It's a new day. This is your time to get it off your chest. Wake wake up. Whether you're mad or blessed. It's time to get up and get something. Call up now. 800-585-1051. We want to hear from you on The Breakfast Club. Hello, who's this? Yo, what up, man? It's Munchie, man. Munchie love by the eighth time, man. What's going on? You said Munchie, man. He said Munchie, (laughs) Munchie. I'm about to say, God damn. Munchie. I can smell the (laughs) flavor. What's up, Munchie? Get what's going on, man? Hey, listen, hey. I just wanted to let y'all know, hey, DJ Envy, what's up? Tell man, what's going on, man? Hey, um, Jess, how you doing? I'm, I'm doing good. What's Ooh. up? <laughs> you, you doing good? <laughs> hey, listen, hey, uh, Charlamagne, dog, I'm just letting you know, I feel you. I looked into the sun yesterday, and I do feel like I, I have some type of extra abilities. You know what I'm saying? I oh, came to work, and I was over here, like, lifting extra shit. Moving extra fast, you know what I'm saying? I'm and I thought <laughs> the dude like down the aisle, I know he was looking at me and he was trying to tell me something, but I know like telepathically, oh, I knew what he was thinking. I went over there and gave it to him. He was like, Man, how the, how you knew that? 
Man, I don't know, Charlemagne. I'm I, telling I believe you. you. My eight year old, my, my eight year old daughter too. My eight year old daughter can pick up pick up her water bottle with her pinky now, and she can make her little sister uh, do anything she says. So she said giggle last night, and her younger sister started laughing. Yo, shut oh, up, okay, man. that's right. Hello, who's this? <laughs> oh, yo. yo, what's up, y'all? It's Matt from Atlanta. What's up, DJ Envy, Charlamagne Tha God, that's hilarious. What's, what's up, good? man? Get it off your chest. So basically, I want to get on my chest. Um, I ended up going to PCG today. Um, I got a little nephew. He hit me up on a last minute trip. And I was like, man, I got to make sure it's a good little trip for him. So I had a good little time, but I had told my job I had COVID to get out of the situation. What is I that, brother? I got the job. Huh? What is PCD? Panama City Beach. Oh, P- oh, PCD. You say that like oh, we okay, know. Okay, I don't know. know. Right. I thought he said CCD, like the you know Catholic school yeah. education thing. But go ahead, go ahead, bro. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, nah, no. Nah, PCB. Okay. Okay. But basically, I told my job I had COVID, and I still got to get like a positive test somehow to uh, get back to work. No, you so don't. Basically, I just need y'all to make sure. No, you don't. don't. They, they want you to take a test to make sure you don't have COVID when you come back. Yeah. They're not testing. So only got to tell them I got so only, only got to tell them I test five like to show up. Yeah, you just go because I, I think it's sometimes COVID will be in your system three to five days now, so mm-hmm. you might be good money. Where's that at? Is that in Florida? No, no, no. Well, yeah, Panama City Beach in Florida. I'm from Atlanta. Oh, okay. I ain't no Florida and Georgia cared about stuff like COVID. Y'all yeah. was wide open when COVID Never was cared. happening. Yeah, now they testing you to make you sure. Why you playing? Why you playing? That is that is fact. I was outside the entire time. I didn't know uh, COVID going on. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad you had fun in Panama City Beach, yo. Oh, yeah. Good talking to you, Justin Larry. Glad to see you on that show. Thank you, baby. All right, brother. Oh, yeah. Get it off your chest. Call us up right now if, if you got something that you got to get off your chest. 800 585 1051. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Break it up. This is your time to get it off your chest. Keep calling. 800-585-1051. We want to hear from you on The Breakfast Club. Hello, who's this? Yo, what it do, man? It's your boy, Block 80. Block what's up, 80, what's, what's up, up, King? What's up, fellas? Get it off your chest, man. Man, I just want to get it off my chest. My Pomeranian escaped the backyard last night. Well, it was early yesterday morning, and I ain't, we ain't seen him since. He used it. He, he run around the neighborhood all the time, but... You said your dog? Man, I don't know. I think somebody picked him up, man. My, my, my wife going through it. How much is it worth? Uh, he ain't nothing but like a thousand dollars. He was, uh, ain't had no paper, so he won't that much. Well, look at the bright side, man. You know, salute to, salute to the person who's about to have a little come up. Damn. You know what I mean? You don't know what that per- <laughs> you don't know what that person going through. That person might Damn. need that money. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's messed up, man. Oh my god. <laughs> Sorry, brother. <laughs> hey, now I got one more thing to get off my chest, man. Yes, sir. Well, how many free, how many hot freestyles I got to drop, man, for y'all to play a snippet of my song, man? Oh, Last God. time I dropped one, Charlemagne said I got some. Y- 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 y'all got to j- drop a little snippet for the world to hear from me one time, man. Well, promote it. Tell people who you, tell the people where to find your raps. Y'all can find me on any, all, I mean, on all streaming platforms. Block eighty. B L O K dot eighty. I just dropped the song called Let's Go. Man, go crazy. Y'all go check that out. ASAP. Good luck. Thanks, brother. Hello, who's this? Hey, this QC calling from the A43 Touchdown Bound. Low Country, what's happening? Hey, too much, man. Everything good with y'all. Yes, sir. What's the word in the chat? Yeah. Hey, Justin Larris, I want to congratulate you on your baby. Um, I, me and my girlfriend, we expecting our first baby. Uh, 225, we credit to D. Thank you so much, and congratulations back to you. Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Hey, Charlemagne, oh, you like to pick on big people and they big back. What are we supposed to say about people with bald heads? Mm. <laughs> what mm. you mean? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> say, say whatever Mr. you want. And I don't pick on Mr. people Queen. with big backs, man. Yes, no, I don't. Oh man! <laughs> hey, but oh, shout out to all the truck drivers. I'm in my truck right now. Hey, let me hear that one. There you go. There Thank you, go. you. Have a good yes, one. Yes, sir. That's all right. right. Salute to the eight four three. And listen, man, for all the big people out there, spring is here. Summer's <laughs> right around the corner. If you're listening to me right now, I pray your big back and belly disappear real soon, man. Jesus. How you know it even come with a belly like? <laughs> that is, is that's where we get him in trouble. It's like what you want coming up back in the front now? Oh my god! I'm just praying it disappears. I'm sending the positive energy, healing energy for the um, big backs and bellies. Okay, well since you got superpowers, just make that back shrink. 
Facts. And the belly. <laughs> oh, we can do that. Hold up, wait. I just did it. Belly be gone. <laughs> belly exactly. be gone. I just did it. <laughs> we got Jess with the mess coming up. What are we talking about? Yes, you know how they were saying in the solar eclipse, right? Like how it's for purging and, you know, getting yep, things yep. out of your system and cutting people off. Mm-hmm. Why we thought that was going to be the city girls yesterday. I got to update y'all. you're right. Mm. Jesus. All right, we'll get to that next. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. We are the Breakfast Club. Let's get to Just with the Mess. News is real, but it's just lies. Just to rob more. Just don't do no lies. Don't do no lies. She don't nobody. Worldwide Just. Worldwide Mess. On the Breakfast Club. She's a culture shift. She was able to get y'all to see something and understand something that nobody could get you to see. It's time to set it off. So yesterday, the city girls, they had uh, um, a heated argument on social media. It started when Young Miami accused JT of sneak dissing her for weeks. And JT didn't really know what she was talking about, you know. So Young Miami started it yesterday? Yeah, like she basically was like, a bitch been sneak dissing me for weeks and I ain't said nothing. So what you mad for? But the argument did get worse when... um, Young my e, I mean Young my e. Young Miami was saying that JT plays victim, and you know she said she did nothing but show JT love, even though she, the last two diss tracks about her was uh, what was supposedly sideways and no bars. Mm-hmm. Okay, so y'all can go back and listen to them for different references or whatever. But JT saw a different like she said, "Oh Miss Mama, this your last day playing dumb or whatever." Right, so that's when it grew more escalated, um, and she was basically saying, "I know I come off crazy and everything, but I have like." I you I've watched you you have watched people drag me you never jump out there for me mm-hmm. you understand what I'm saying and she said it'd be too much to tweet so JT was like I want to sit down with you like on Carisha please and this time leave <laughs> what? Santa, yep and she was like this time leave Santana home so that's when Santana was activated and he jumped on there basically he was just like. JT, don't play the victim. You always, you always throwing me in something. You mm-hmm. already unfollow me. You block me. And I don't have nothing to do with your situation. You take your anger out on the wrong people. So don't mention me mm-hmm. or whatever. So that's when Carisha was like, for you to come over here and play victim is crazy and all that. And all I do is show you love. Even after the, the sneak this or whatever, I'll be like bumping your music and screaming your lyrics with my chest. So, and Young Miami also accused her of letting the internet get in her head. But bo- we can say that on both of their accounts because mm-hmm. both of them, they be on there responding to things that shouldn't even be relevant to them. So, right. I mean, this, 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 the internet gets in everybody's head, you know, both of them. So, yeah, so stuff like this hurts my heart because I love the absolutely. city girls and, mm-hmm. and whatever issues they have shouldn't be had on social media. Y'all mm-hmm. came up from the ground up together. together Sit down, right. have the discussion in private. Right. Don't be monkeys for these folks digital circus. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I just mm-hmm. hate, I hate how this plays out online. Like, mm-hmm. you, you guys are friends before this, yeah. this music industry. So, Pick up the phone and call each other. And even though, and even though it was a little argument, you can tell that they both love each other in the argument because they didn't get disrespectful, right? Yeah, because then, mm-hmm. then you see, you go back a couple days ago and you see JT and Glorilla argue, and that argument was totally different. They weren't friends from the jump anyway. They met during the business. These two have love for each other. They just mm-hmm. more so explaining themselves to each other, whatever. So apparently they got on the phone, and they were because the last week was like around five o'clock. They got. When they got off the phone, they had a conversation. Of course, they hashed it out. When they got off the phone, JT had another post posted, and it was like, um, "If I'm ever mad, it's it's for a reason." Um, when people had canceled on you, I did the first episode of Carisha Please. I popped up in that red wig. People dragged me for it and all of that, but I love you. I wish you the best. And she also said, "I love how fast you got on here behind Santana." And then so Young Miami saw it and I said, well, "We just got off the phone. You bring this back to the internet." And um, Young Miami, I mean JT said. Well, this was this was this was a sweep before we got on the phone, but it just probably didn't update until they got off the phone. Yeah, blow, and yeah. then everybody was blowing up a phone anyway. Everybody was probably blowing up blowing up both of their phones or whatever. So they both ended off with "I love you, I love you too." And oh, that's good. I love you okay, so dead. Hey, and yeah. I I hate too when people get mad uh, about you not coming to their defense on social media. Yeah, like turn your phone off. Mm-hmm. Okay, mm-hmm. if it's an issue in real life, I'm there. What are we supposed to do to these people on social media? Nothing. Yeah, you're not gonna change their minds with no mm-hmm. tweets, no IG posts. <laughs> but what she, but but what um, JT was saying is, you come to to, to the defense of everybody, not everybody mm-hmm. else, but like Santana, or you got mm-hmm. something to say about everything. When somebody call you out, you talking to random people, fans, and all of that. Yeah. But when it comes to me, 
I, you don't step behind me, but I do step behind you. JT has jumped in stuff for Young Miami on Twitter. But, I mean, that's I just, just like, what a is girl that go- thing. Yeah, but what is that going to do? Like, I know you-, you want to be a girl, but you're not a girl, so you'll never understand. No, I'm just talking about in general. Like, what is that going to do with me jumping on Twitter, talking back to a bunch of people that we don't even know? A bunch of people attacking you online, and I jump in and say, yo, leave my partner alone. What's the... Okay. I mean, it's I guess it's it's a girl thing that you will not understand. I mean, I I don't I no, wouldn't I, do it. I'm I, not on Twitter yeah. anyway, but I'm just saying like I think it's a life thing. If I know that you got my back in real life mm-hmm. and yeah. I can count on you in real life, mm-hmm. yeah. who cares about what happens on social media? Well, sometimes maybe, sometimes it feels good though. Sometimes it feels yeah, good when your partner got your back you got or, your or homie got your back. But especially after you had theirs. But like Charlemagne says, sometimes we don't know the full story and sometimes you like it's like you said, maybe I need to have your back in person and yeah. Who cares about those people online that, that's yes. going to poke at you anyway? Okay, but we're talking about young girl rappers. Yeah, you know, female right. rappers. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it's going to happen. All right, let's get to some guy stuff then. Meek okay. Mill threatens Wale after seeing him hang out with an ex-friend. Jesus. So Meek Mill took to um, X. I keep on forgetting that. It's not Twitter no more. That's mm-hmm. how long I ain't been on there um, to address Wale after he appeared in a photo with Dean Stay Ready, who Meek referred to as the enemy. So this is crazy. I'm going to read these tweets just like um, Meek Mill would read them. He said, Wale never liked me. Now I'm going to treat him like the streets every time I see him. I gave him a thousand chances. These guys be thinking they linking with the enemy clown ass. I wish I would have knew the other day I would have stretched you. What? What are we talking about? By the way, they sound like the city girls too. Exactly. Just like it. Exactly. <laughs> and you can't even say they. It's all Meek. <laughs> it's just right. all Meek. You're right. You're right. Yeah, You're he was right. just like, man, um, and because th- he started like replaying old stuff <laughs> he said they come off they 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 like bitches after you cut them off now I'm gonna come to DC and take over the streets and power some some NIGGAs that hate him but nobody hates him he's depressed and sick also he been that way I don't understand why Meek uh, talks so much street stuff on social media like for everything that Meek, mm-hmm. Meek stands for mm-hmm. and all right. the good that Meek does in the community the people that Meek uh, associates with affiliates with why does he talk about Cause I, I think doing he's, violence to people so much oh on my social God, media. The violence is crazy, but I still think he, he's, a, he's a person, right? Because I see both sides of this, right? If mm. somebody's issued on me and issued on me crazy, and you're supposed to be my guy, and you take a picture with him, it would make me feel a way. But there's been many a times where I didn't want to take a picture with somebody, mm. and they kind of force you to take a picture, mm. and you really don't want to take that picture, but you do it because you don't want to be confrontational, you don't want to be rude, and you take it. Mm-hmm. And I see both sides. I do too, but I just don't like how. All right, this this the last tweet of my read. He said, "I don't believe no Diddy story about me once they lied about me. Now anybody try to sexually assault me, I'm I'm gonna be a bang out on a spot. It's, it'll be a bang out on a spot. How y'all don't know me <laughs> like that? I don't care. Y'all confusing my son. He's 12 with people saying his dad is gay. It's sick now. Out here, Lord so f it." But if you scroll back up, anybody try to sexually know, assault me, crazy. it will be a bang out that on the spot. Crazy. Maybe <laughs> your son's friends are seeing how you tweet as well. Nah, man, but you know I what? Hate that. What he's saying is true, though, because you got to think his son is 12 years old. Mm-hmm. I mean, probably go to school in Philadelphia. Absolutely. Them yeah. kids is ruthless. Yeah. Yes. You know what I mean? And Meek had a whole series of mixtape called Flameless. I know they're oh, going boy. crazy. Listen. Food. Jesus. I understand that, but it's like, just stay away from all of it. Did you see Wale's reply? No, I didn't. Let me say. It say when you get in other people unserious drama in this industry, 90% of the time, they be back friends eventually, and then you look silly in the end. So I love minding my business. If a photo can create such vitriol, oh my gosh, Wale. Um, I have no idea what that means. He said, one has to ask himself some questions. Happy Monday. I love the way he responds, though, mm-hmm. to mm-hmm. a bunch of everything. He also said, Wale, you a groupie when you try to take a picture with Ruben. <laughs> That's what he said? Yeah. He was like... Meek said Wale. Meek said that. Meek, Meek, said, that. That. Uh, Meek, said, Meek that. said that about Wale. He was like, he was trying to take pictures with Ruben like a groupie. Oh. Now we're sitting around a bum ops in Philly. We should have just read tweets and asked people, who is this, Meek, JT, or Young Miami? <laughs> we would know. <laughs> no, <laughs> take the names out. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> just read the tweets. Jesus. He's like, come on, man. What y'all doing? So at the end, did they make up like JT? No, no, oh. no. And, and what you just showed me of Wale, that's him basically responding to him taking a picture with the app. Um, yep. You know, the guy stay ready. Maybe I just be thinking too highly of people. I just be what thinking, you mean? I think too highly of me. I think too highly of you know JT and Young Miami. Like, mm-hmm. pick up the phone and call each other, y'all. That's what they eventually did. Why all of this got to play out on social media? Why but y'all got to be other people's entertainment I get for today? But I do understand too, because if somebody issues on Jess, I feel mm-hmm. like they issue on me. If somebody issues on you, I feel like they issue on me. Pause, 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 pause. Right, yeah. And we not gonna handle that on social media. You right? That's crazy. I mean, I don't know. I might, cause yeah, you she will. will. <laughs> 
<laughs> she but, definitely yeah, will. but it's just like I, I'm, I'm not going. I don't see these people. You got everybody number in the industry. You got a little phone book. Them buttons but you push I behind the scenes. I get it. Yeah, he's I a button it. pusher. Yeah, absolutely. You pull, <laughs> you, pull, you pull out the chopper. Just pull out the chopper immediately. I don't care. All right. Well, that is Jess with the mess. Now, when we come back, we got front page news. We got to tell you about Donald Trump, also Joe Biden, and an attack that the uh, feds caught early. We'll get to it next. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. Mm. Wake, wake up. Wake up. You're locked into The Breakfast Club. All right. Morning, we are The Breakfast Club. Let's get in some front page news. Now, quickly, last night, uh, UConn beat Purdue 75-60. Did you guys watch it? I tried, man, but no. it was so boring. That first half of basketball was so boring. It was bad. What was the score after the first half? Like 36-30 or 36, something 36-30, like? yeah. And I was just like, what are we watching? And then I don't even like the fact that they do the one whole half. And it's always been like that you in like college, quarters. men's college basketball. Right. I like quarters. Man. Yeah, I like quarters, too. I just, I'm, you know, I'm, women's college basketball is way more exciting. I don't care how much, how many times y'all dunk in the game for the men's. Yeah, I didn't care. Yeah. Women's was, was ma- way, way more, more exciting. Yeah, way more interesting. Way more exciting. Now more we, star power, better mm-hmm. storylines, everything. Now, we got to talk about this Idaho team that was arrested. He was uh, plotting an attack on a church. He had flamethrowers, guns, all types of stuff. man was arrested over the weekend for allegedly trying to provide support to ISIS and for planning to attack several churches. U.S. Attorney's Office's 18-year-old Alexander Mercurio of Coeur d'Alene was arrested on Saturday for trying to provide material support and resources to the terrorist group. Court documents claim Mercurio pledged his allegiance to ISIS and intended to commit attacks on its behalf. Documents say he planned to attack people at churches in Coeur d'Alene on Sunday. He allegedly planned to use guns, knives, and fire. If he is convicted, he could face up to 20 years in prison. Where the hell you get a flamethrower? Amazon? I don't know where he you got can, that you from. You probably can. You can get anything off there. Damn. I don't know where he got that from. Well, Machine sell flamethrowers? I don't, I don't be searching that kind of stuff on there, so I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> why do people get so why do women get so mad when you bring up Sheen Sheen is dope because like you act like we just go ahead and just get anything <laughs> no we came off the elevator the other day and the two young ladies at the front desk two young lovely, lo- lovely young ladies that work at the front desk uh-huh. they was on their phones I was like what y'all what y'all website y'all on Sheen no because <laughs> no. she wasn't <laughs> she wasn't she was on Fashion Nova and that's a girl so What's, is, is Fashion Nova higher end than Sheen or is Sheen higher end than Fashion Nova? Fashion Nova uh, actually is getting a little cheap. Like, they, like every everybody gets their vendors from the same person, mm-hmm. I, I swear. I mean, their vendor is the same. Pretty little thing. Mm-hmm. Sheen. Because mm-hmm. Sheen actually used to be cheaper. Now they're getting a little bit of quality stuff. Okay. And, um, and Fashion Nova, they all got the same vendor. You know who want to come up? Mm-hmm. Timu. They just want to come. Yes. Timu. T-E-M-U, y'all. So if there's a dude out there trying to get something for his girl, mm-hmm. he should go to Timu. Timu, Shane, Fashion Nova, and Pretty Little Thing. They okay. all got the same. All got the same vendor. Okay. If you wash the stuff and you dry it, it's gonna look like something else. <laughs> some, something was made. It's gonna turn into something else. It's gonna turn into something else. Yes. All right. Silk turned to cotton. <laughs> <laughs> now we got to talk Donald Trump. Now Donald Trump yesterday said, uh, as far as abortion's concerned, uh, it's whatever the state decides to do. Uh, he didn't say he's pro. He didn't say he's against. He said whatever the state decides to do mm. is what he's with. But. That's not what he said several years ago. Donald Trump staked out his first public position on abortion in April of 1989, when he co-sponsored a dinner at the Plaza Hotel in Manhattan for the president of a national group that advocates for abortion rights. In 1999 on NBC's Meet the Press, Trump defended his position, doubling down on it. I'm very pro-choice. I hate the concept of abortion. I hate it. I hate everything it stands for. I cringe when I listen to people debating the subject. But you still, I just believe in choice. But you would not ban it? No. As the years passed and Trump grew more serious about running for president, his position on abortion flipped. This was him at CPAC, the Conservative Political Action Conference, in 2011. I'm pro-life. By then, Trump was opposed to abortion rights. In a CNN interview in June 2015, even Trump himself seemed momentarily confused about where he stood on the issue. I know you're opposed to abortion. Right. I'm uh, pro-choice. You're, uh, you're pro-choice or pro-life? I'm pro-life, I'm sorry. Pro-life. Uh, people's stands on things can change, so that mm-hmm. don't mean anything. You, you, you can do that to anybody who's been in you know, politics or talking politics for a long time. You can, it, it's, you can change your stances on things. But is he yeah. pro-life or is he pro-choice or is he to say, what did the states decide? Well, as of right now, let's be clear, uh, this is politics over principles. 
Okay. You know, what, what Trump and Republicans have done in regards to abortion rights, all those conservative judges he appointed to the Supreme Court, it's cost them votes and cost them elections. So now Trump is trying to tell these people what they want to hear because he feels it's politically beneficial to do so. Yeah. Mm. So he's trying to get votes. Absolutely. All right. Like, this is all political theater. Like, I, and I, I've been saying for months, if I was Democrats, I would just run over and over and over ads of Trump, you know, repeatedly taking credit from, uh, you know, making the overturning of Roe v. Wade happen. You know, cause the, the reason you don't have abortion rights is simply because of, of, of Donald Trump and the Supreme Court, you know, justices that he appointed. I would never lay off that message, you know, regardless of what political pivot Trump is currently doing if I was Democrat. Mm -hmm. And lastly, President Joe Biden announced new moves he's making to reduce or eliminate student debt. The ability for working and middle class folks to repay their student loans has become so burdensome that a lot can't repay it for even decades after being in school. My administration will propose a new rule to cancel up to $20,000 in runaway interest for any borrower that owes more now, owes more now than when they started paying the loan. We plan to cancel debt for borrowers who the Department of Education determines were cheated by universities that left students on unaffordable loans and delivered little in benefits to students. Fantastic. Yeah, and, I think that's great. And they need to continue to uh, show those success success stories, you know, through the actual people who are getting the relief. I don't want to hear that from Joe Biden's. He's, he's uninspiring. Yeah, I want I want to hear that from the people who have actually gotten the relief. Now, it's very difficult because when you graduate school, you know, your, your first five to 10 years or even 15, 20 years is paying back them school loans. So mm -hmm. you can't buy your first house. There's a lot of things you can't do. You can't invest because you can't do none of that because all you're doing is paying those loans back. And then you see the millions and billions of dollars that they give to all these other nations and the millions and billions of dollars that they're giving to things that a lot of people don't care about, but a lot of people can't even start their life because they have all these loans. So you got to show that you are also pouring money into the people right here in this country and you're doing it through student loan debt relief. So you got to show more of that. That's right. But show it through the people who are actually getting the relief. Like you should have ads with those people Talking about how much got wiped out. You're right. Like I know one person who got a, I know a person who got three hundred thousand dollars wiped out. Really? And the reason they had three hundred thousand dollars wiped so out much? because he had student loan debt, his wife had student wow. loan debt, and one of his kids did. And that's something you can combine it all can together. You? Yeah, something they did that they combined it all together. But the whole family got their student loan debt wiped out, and it was like three hundred thousand wow. dollars. Wow, that's then that changes. But that's a person. Sure. Who, yes, yes. You should hear that from that yes, individual. Absolutely. You know, if you saw that person on a commercial telling that story, that resonates with you more than Joe Biden's that's, inspiring self. That just made me feel good. Well, all right. Mm -hmm. Well, that is front page news. All right. Now let's open up the phone lines. 800-585-1051. Let's talk Young Miami and JT. Now, just with the mess, she reported that Young Miami and JT got into an altercation online yesterday. They're friends now. They made up. Good morning, Young Miami. She listens every morning. Mm -hmm. So we're asking, 800-585-1051, could you be friends with somebody after you get into a public, I guess, confrontation? Kerfuffle? Yeah. Kerfuffle. It depends what's said. <laughs> yeah. Depends what they yeah, say. I, I believe it. Let's, let's discuss. 800-585-1051, because I always feel like you have the opportunity to call me. Mm -hmm. You ain't have to go online. Mm -hmm. right. You ain't have to try to go that route. So you were yeah. trying to embarrass me. You were trying to do something that you didn't have to do. Yeah. And, and it sucks if you just find out online that no, y'all ain't cool. I didn't know we had an issue like that. Oh, okay. Or if you did know that there was some type of tension, because, like, of course, it's it's been obvious that it's been some type of tension between them, but who... Had let it was who took it to the internet first, mm -hmm. and and because I don't think that that in this situation, G, JT thought that Young Miami thought those songs were about her, right? So when you find out certain details, like oh you thought that, damn, well why you didn't speak to me about it? Because that's what she said in one of the uh, in her tweets, like well if you thought that about me, why did didn't why didn't you hit me up and right. say yo why these songs about me? You know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. yeah, well, let's discuss eight hundred five eight five one zero five one. Call us up right now. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. Pull out, pull out your, pull out your phone. Call in right now. Call me. Add your opinion to the Breakfast Club top. Break, break, break it down. 800-585-1051. The Breakfast Club. Daddy, call him my phone. Call him my phone. It's topic time. Call 800-585-1051 to join into the discussion with the Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. We are The Breakfast Club. Now, if you're just joining us during Jess with the Mess, Jess discussed JT in Young Miami. Now, what happened for people that's just tuning in, Jess? So, basically, they were beefing um, yesterday over 
just uh, JC feeling like Young Miami never comes to her defense when things are happening and they got some secret animosity that you know like it, it, it's just basically girl stuff right but um just accusing each other of not supporting each other basically and and not being there for each other and they jumped on the phone and they they got it together but I don't think no no blows were traded where it's it was irreconcilable and I don't like you saying it's just girl stuff okay because Megan Wale was having a little kerfuffle yesterday. I don't know. Why you keep saying Megan Wale? It's Wale. I mean, it's me. It's not Wale, yo. Well, no. Young ask, Billy. 800-585-1051. Could you still be friends with somebody after they, you know, put your business online like that? Could mm -hmm. you, Jess? Yeah, depending on what, like Charlamagne said, depending on what was said, what they say. You know, because sometimes when you, like, when you're so busy trying to hurt a person, you can really say some things you can't come back from. See, the, the only problem Seriously. I have is is you have my number. So that mm -hmm. means we're really not friends. Like, if, the, if if you gotta put it online, that means this was something that you was feeling regardless and you wanted to put it out there. You could have hit me. It's and I principle. could be wrong. Yeah. I could be wrong. We could be wrong. We could, we could be mm -hmm. a, a friend and be like, you know what? I made a wrong decision. My bad. Yeah. But if, once you put it online, it's like, bro, you yeah, got my, my number. You really tried it. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It depends. It depends what was said. And um, yeah, it, it, it depends what was said. And I had another point, but I forgot, so it don't even matter. But it definitely depends what was said. You yeah. know? I might, it might come back to me later. We got Courtney on the line. Courtney, good morning. Good morning. How you feeling, Courtney? I'm feeling good. How you feeling? Good, good, good. What's your thoughts? My thoughts are, we're friends, and you take it to the internet. Now you've given other people who know nothing about us a chance to weigh in on our business. There's no way we could really be friends if you're making it public. Our beef should be in private. I agree. I agree. Yeah. Oh, I agree. You just reminded me of my other Thank point. You, my other point was uh, depends what was said, and I would be questioning our friendship because it seems like you care more about what these people on social media okay. think than you do what I think. Because if we've been friends and we've been homies for so long, why would you feel the need to just tell all of these people on social media our business? Yeah. Right. What? Right. Wow. And, I, and I think nobody ever thought. Young T, young, uh, I said Young T, JT and Young Miami had beef. Like, mm -hmm. it seemed, you know, when they were up here, you could tell, like, there was a little bit, but you didn't, you couldn't see that they had beef or there was problems, so they were I even would, thinking I would, that I way. I wouldn't call it what they had beef when they was up here. I would call it that you could just tell that they're two totally different people. Growing in two different directions. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, let's go to uh, Kenny's on the line. Kenny, good morning. Good morning. Hey, Kenny, what's your thoughts? I'm in, I'm in the gym, so I'm trying to get a little quick workout in. Okay. So listen, I had an ex-girlfriend that I, we broke up, and we broke up for whatever reason. I get a new girlfriend, and probably about a year and a half later, I get engaged. I put on social media, you know how you put the, you know, we're engaged? Yeah. So her stupid friend jumps on my page and says, uh, congratulations, now you can stop calling my girl. So I was wow. like, damn, I don't even call your girl. I mean, we're cool, but I don't even call her. So we, I seen her at homecoming, and we had this big argument about that because I was, you know, getting on her about, you know, why would your girl put that on my page? And so people were looking. We were arguing. And then one of my frat brothers set us down. It was like, y'all don't need to be, you know, beeping no more. It wasn't her that did it. But I know that it was her that actually told her that I was calling her, which I wasn't. But, uh, you know, you know, people gaslight and shit. I'm oh, sorry, sorry, I can't cuss. But people, people gaslight mm -hmm. stuff, and so we had to sit down and we came to an agreement. No, we're not the best of friends like we used to be, but we're at least cordial when we see each other. You know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, like I'm saying, you can't be back to friends with that person <clears throat> like you were mm -hmm. before. Yeah. Because you never have that trust anymore. Yeah. That's the biggest thing. Like, and you, then it was the intent behind that. Like she correct. really meant to like send flares up to the fiance like so that can start an argument between her and him and what if you and the person don't even know y'all really got issues like you know mm -hmm. y'all might be having a mm -hmm. uh, like like a, like a little kerfuffle behind the scenes as mm -hmm. friends mm -hmm. but then you find out on social media that that person ain't rocking with you no more That's like right. that you like damn like we yeah like this it, was between us but you you took it to social media yeah, so clearly, I've never, clearly I never meant nothing to you yeah ever that's right. Yeah. Well, 800 585 1051. We're talking JT and Young Miami. Uh, and we're asking if you are <laughs> friends with somebody and they put your business on social media. The fact that y'all beefing on social media, could y'all still be friends after that? Could it be the same? Let's discuss this. The Breakfast Club. Good morning. If y'all talking about it, you 
know we talking about it. It's Topic Time. Call 800-585-1051 to join into the discussion with The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, Jess Hilarious, Charlemagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. Now, if you're just joining us, we're talking about JT in Young Miami. Now, during Jess with the Mess, Jess reported that they had a little uh, conflict online, right? Mm-hmm. And we're asking 800-585-1051, could you be friends with somebody after they put after they put your business online? We got Bree on the line. Bree, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. What's your thoughts, Bree? Um, my thoughts is if it ever has to come to public life, if anybody has to get into our stuff, then we were never friends. And that you had some type of seeks to mockery and that you just don't want to be friends with me. And that's what I'm saying. Like, I'm not going to be friends with you because you have to get into our stuff. And that you had some type of seeks to mockery or something that you couldn't tell me or we couldn't work out. Okay. That is real. Sev. Yes. What's your thoughts, brother? Hey, um... Well, I feel like if somebody was trying to talk to me all crazy and disrespect me, even if we've been through something, then I don't, I don't think that I can ever mess with them again. Especially if you're willing to belittle me and all that. That means that'll happen again. That's real. Okay. All right, well, thank you, brother. Well, that, that, that's just my call, man. I'm a big fan, man. I, I like hearing y'all. I, I keep doing that thing. Thank you, King. All right. So what's the moral to the story? I mean, the moral of the story is, man, if you and a person are really friends, I think that you and a person should keep whatever issues y'all have between each other. I don't know why folks choose to share what you're going through with your so-called friend with a whole bunch of strangers that don't even know you. Right. <laughs> like, <clears throat> I don't get it. What if we can't even... That's the only way to get through to that person. What if we can't even have a civilized conversation on the phone? Like, what if... You know, because mm. in one of them suites, and she just was like, JT was like, you leave Santana home. You know, Santana, Young Miami, they were real, real close. Mm-hmm. And what if he's always around? Like, just, just hypothetically speaking, he's always around... And that was JT way Because Young Miami started this But what if JT She just put more out there Than Young Miami So this is something That she always wanted to say But what if She couldn't say it to her Because well, Santana so far I mean uh, Young Miami Was just so far gone I will say this If you don't think You can have a civilized conversation On the phone With just y'all two mm-hmm. You damn sure can't have one On social media No, no, no. <laughs> That's why she right. said Bring me to Carisha please But you can also text somebody You ain't gotta You ain't gotta You know do that as well You could text them And that way you know That that other person ain't there Santana No Texas pissed me off Texas pissed me off Texas pissed me off You gotta yeah. call me Cause I'd be so mad You'd be like What the, what the hell mm. she just, what the, what? Right And then you know they, and then Texas can be insensitive Yo, I gotta hear a person say I gotta hear you That's right Cause it That's can, right. It can be missed Construed in any type of way, and, th- and them voice messages ain't nobody listening to no eight minute I voice message. Hate them voice messages. You sending voice messages that are longer than songs. I can't. That's I don't want to hear your mini podcast. <clears throat> nope. Pick up the goddamn phone and call me. And if I don't answer, that mean I didn't want to talk to you. Jesus. All right. First of all, I be sending voice notes all the time. I, I send voice messages. <laughs> you ain't never sent no eight minute voice <laughs> no, message. Not eight long. minutes, but damn. <laughs> but, me and, but, me, but me and Jess will call each other. Yeah, who, for who, sure. Who, who sends you eight minute voice messages? What? Nobody. Uh, yeah, <laughs> crazy people, insane people. Like who? Insane oh like who? humans. <laughs> like who? <All> right. <laughs> like who? Okay, I'm going to tell you something. If you send a voice message and you look at it and it's 336, 436, 536, 636, don't press in. Uh. Don't press in. Okay. I want to know. Text the person and say, I need to talk to you. <laughs> I want to know what celebrity be sending voice messages like celebrity? that. Celebrity? I ain't got no celebrity friends. No. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. <laughs> <laughs> Lined up and down this morning. <laughs> All right. We got Jess with the best coming up. What are we talking about? Oh, my God. So, remember yesterday, uh, Charlamagne, you said you might not want to critique another comedian because you one day may be in that situation. That's right. Mm-hmm. Gerard Carmichael, one of his recent jokes resurfaced, and people are not okay with it. So, All right. we're going to get into that. All right, we'll talk about that next. So don't move. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. Yeah. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Jess Hilarious, Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club, and I just want to salute to everybody. Uh, after about a year and a half, me and my wife have finally got back into the podcast business. The Casey Crew Podcast is released today, so hey. it's been about a year and a half. Uh, a lot of stuff going on, so we get to discuss a lot of that on our podcast. And our podcast is based on relationships and uh, raising our kids. We have six kids, of course, so we talk about a little bit of everything: the good, the bad, the ugly. And everything with relationships. So hoping uh, that you could uh, learn from our mistakes and, and learn from the, the, the good things. We learn do as from well. your mistakes. Mm-hmm. But, and also, too, um, uh, speaking <clears throat> of podcasts, I want to tell people that the second annual Black Effect Podcast Festival is happening April 27th hey. in Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, salute to everybody that's been up 
Ordering tickets already. Salute mm-hmm. to everybody uh, that, that that sold out the VIP already. We got Wallow and Gilly on that stage. Just Hilarious will be on that stage doing her podcast, Carefully Reckless Live. She'll be doing Just Fix My Mess Live yes. on the stage. Horrible Decisions, Mandy and Weezy will be on that stage. Poor Minds podcast. Right. Dre and Lex will be on that stage. Debbie Brown with the Deeply Well podcast. Um, Ball Alert Show will be on that page. Shout Ball Alert. And my man Will Lucas with Black Tech Green Money. Plus, we got panels. We got John Hope Bryan on mm-hmm. panels mm-hmm. and... Uh, 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 Damon John and Carrie Champion and Ashana Ayers so make sure you go get your tickets at eventbrite.com right now I'll go to blackeffect.com slash podcast festival to get your tickets for the second annual Black Effect Podcast Festival happening April 27th in Atlanta that's right and, and you guys could uh, hit me up with some remedies I lost my voice on Friday it was completely gone on Friday so it's, mm-hmm. it's slowly coming back I've been doing the tea thing I've been doing the sprays I've been doing everything the honey and all that yeah. but it's coming back slowly but you won't tell the people what surgery you had I didn't have no surgery every time we take like a week off or something envy goes to get a little tuck a little nip i okay. have not got a nip last tuck. time y'all remember he came back and his voice changed like a completely different person that was true nose job no it wasn't a nose job i, I think you got polyps. your adam's apple shaved down a little bit what mm. that's what i'm thinking mm. you notice you don't see you don't really see it do you no what do you, what do you, but i don't see yours either Unless you like, re- whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> I'm saying, unless you really chewing or something me? like that, you <laughs> be like, girl, whoa. don't play with me. <laughs> whoa. whoa! But for real, but did you know it's it's a fact that tea dries your throat out even more. So you've been drinking all this tea, so I shouldn't be drinking tea even drier. Yeah, not too much. Don't oversaturate your throat with no tea. Don't so what should I be doing? doing? I don't your know. Throat wet is what she's trying to tell you. No, oh my gosh. Moist. Tea is gonna wet your throat, but it's, it's such a dehydrated. It, it's so dehydrative. So. But I, I, they give me a tea bag pause that says throat coat. They did what? That is the <laughs> worst Nigga, tea what? ever. What's the hey, worst tasting yo. tea? Pause. Was, pause. I don't even know if you can pause that one. Yeah. Jesus, we need to fast forward. You heard of, you that heard was of, crazy. You heard of did you hear what he said? Yeah. Damn. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Ain't nothing worse than who me said. Me said it's going. We gonna bang on the spot if somebody <laughs> sexually assaulted saw me. I what? Y'all. I hate y'all. Damn. Just, just with the mess is up next, man. <laughs> Morning, everybody. We are the Breakfast Club. Let's get to just with the mess. News is real. Weather is just lies. Just a Robin Moore. Just don't do no lies. Don't do no lies. <laughs> She don't spare nobody. She don't spare nobody. Worldwide Jess, worldwide mess. On the Breakfast Club. She's a coach of shit. She was able to get y'all to see something and understand something that nobody could get you to see. It's time to set it off. So yesterday I reported that Gerard Carmichael has a pro- or had a problem with Dave Chappelle's um, anti-trans jokes, is what he calls them. And one of his jokes... Uh, Resurface. Well, actually, it's it's actually not even a resurface because it was it was new. Just Fridays uh, on Friday's episode of Gerald Carmichael's reality show, he talked about his sexual desires. One of the jokes that is going viral is when he's talking about um, a race based role playing with his white boyfriend. I sometimes joke to him that like our relationship is like that of like a slave and the master son who like. Teaches me how to read by candlelight. Yeah, he groans too, because he's a good person. He doesn't like that joke. I like that joke. That's my burden. I think that's hilarious. Y- yes, sir. Y- Marie Antoinette, sir. I don't know what that is. You know, that's, uh, that's a joke. That's for me. I didn't laugh once. Neither and did not, I. And no. not, and not even just because of the content. It just was a corny joke. Right, right, mm-hmm. right, right. I agree. Yeah. I didn't laugh because it was a corny joke and because of the content. Yeah. Um, I can't bring myself to laugh at something like that. Um, but many people online were not too happy with the comments, just like he wasn't happy with Dave Chappelle's jokes. Mm-hmm. Um, it's one of the comments said, "One black, some black men." really have deep rooted issues the self-hate is so cringe that was another quote this one said it's just not funny bro and um that was actually a white woman who said that <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and somebody saying just like that he lost me uh someone else said this is not funny he could have just kept that to himself his show was hard to watch i tried and simply couldn't continue he's so corny it's not even about the joke it's just sad no the tweets you read those are tweets that yeah. I'm reading. Yes, but all were different ones. I think we need Gerard to come to the front of the congregation this morning. We'd like to have a little word with him. <laughs> I think we should have a little word with That's him. That's where we going? I think so. Mm. Mm. Yeah, it was, it was bad. It was bad. Mm-hmm. So, but like he said, that's my joke. It, I mean, you know, that's... That's what I like. I mm-hmm. like that joke. Okay, those are Dave's jokes. That's right. That's what he that, likes. And that's right. why he got to come to the front of the congregation. And quick, right. the, and just like you had blamed him for that, and you didn't like that, 
one day that could be you because we That's are right. comedians. We're That's all right. in the hot seat at some point. That's right. Mm-hmm. So moving on, Jonathan Majors was sentenced to probation after assault conviction. So a judge ruled that um, he will be on probation. They didn't say how long. I looked and looked and looked for that. I don't know how long, but mm-hmm. it all. Uh, he's only having to pay a two hundred and fifty dollar fine and do a year in an in person counseling program, and he has to continue on his uh, mental health therapy, which and, he's been in. And what is this for? This is for the conviction um, that assault? he had against. Uh, Grace Jabari, his ex. Yeah, I didn't even know he had got probation. I just thought he had to go attend some classes. No, no, no. Yep, that came with probation. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. um, and if he at any time violates his probation, he could be forced to spend up to a year in jail. You know, it's so, I mean, you look at all of the stuff that uh, you know Jonathan Majors lost professionally, mm-hmm. right? And you're like, damn, he lost all of that for a misdemeanor. Yep. And yeah. then now you get a, a a year of classes. Yeah. Probation and what else you said? Uh, and he has to. Uh, two hundred fifty dollar fine, and mm-hmm. he has to continue with his mental health therapy, which he's been in for yeah. months now. For, for a misdemeanor, yeah, misdemeanor, and evidence that showed that he running from the white. You girl. saw it running See, from. That's what I was like, gonna you say. You saw yeah. him yeah. running away from this white woman. It was he. Mm-hmm. Shay, it was he. What she said and what he said. There was yep. no witnesses. Nobody seen it. They seen her in the club after that. You seen him running away, mm-hmm. and he still got convicted. Still got convicted. That's scary. The yeah. media should be ashamed of itself in a lot of ways. Absolutely. Uh, but to act like there's not a race dynamic here is insane. Mm-hmm. <laughs> of course. Like a black man, of course. big black man, yep. little white woman. He's running away from her on the video. Yep. Yep. And they made it seem like it was like a murder that happened. Yeah. And it ended up being a misdemeanor. And right. even the driver attested. Like, he, uh, you know, he said that Grace was the aggressor when he was like trying to tell her, look, come on, let's just get out the car. He was, he was, we saw she that. was the aggressor. But, there, we saw but, that. but then there's a video. You see yeah. the video of him putting her yeah, back in the car crazy. and running away, yeah. Yeah. which, by the way, you should do. In that situation, absolutely. If you, if, you a, if you a any man really, but if you a black man and it's a situation like that with a white woman, I would encourage the same thing: take off running in the opposite direction, absolutely, and hope absolutely. somebody's recording the whole thing. But you still gonna end up losing a whole bunch of stuff and getting charged with a goddamn misdemeanor. But a full order of protection will remain in place for his ex girlfriend, Grace, uh, Grace Jabari, which he probably didn't plan to go back around to anyway. So whatever. And Majors did not even make a statement in court yesterday. But and when she made a statement, he didn't even look up at her. She was so sad. <laughs> Anyway, so that was that. <laughs> and oh. she's suing him now too, because yeah. I'm sure that's next, right? Yeah, yeah, she is civilly. I don't, I'm not sure, but look, I, it's something else I want to shout out, y'all. So, oh, got? and today, today, yes, today. Well, last night, the premiere of another Elvin Gray movie, the actor that got chased around the city. It is um, Jonathan Majors inspired <laughs> movie. I'm gonna ask him did he uh, see that? So yeah, it was. It's really good, really mm. good. Y'all should watch it's, it's another on Tubi. movie. It's why do everything got to be on Tubi? Well, it's not on Tubi. Alvin Gray is a great screen director, you know, a director, sure. filmmaker, producer, and everything. But where's the movie? Tubi. It's on Tubi. See but I'm saying, but it's so good. But he, don't act, just ask like that, like, you know, oh, it got to be on Tubi because. No, I just said. Uh, it, well. it did sound like a Tubi. Whatever. Because he had another one called. um the 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 um the, the nurse rapper who, who got shot in the hill the rapper who got shot in the yeah, hill yeah that was good too the nurse um, who saw the I, nurse who saw I the baby babies. walking down the highway yes. no the nurse who saw the baby walking down the highway yes and then he uh his last film was the Risa Tisa inspired film um what's the title of that how he making these the, the so woman fast. who didn't know listen what he's like Will Peck and them he'll be playing he's like Tyler Perry oh yeah. He just ain't got their money yet. But listen, the the film is good. Mm-hmm. Y'all need to watch that. It's called The Woman Who Didn't Know Who She Married. Okay. Yes. Right. Y'all Quickly. gonna stop playing. Because I send it, I send it to you all the time. And you don't be watching it. But you always got something to say. I ain't even oh, say wonder, nothing. I'm going to for an interview. Yeah. I didn't even say nothing. All right. <laughs> I can't wait to make a Tubi movie. But that all is right. just with the mess. Wait a minute. How is oh. it just with the mess? I got a minute left. I'm sorry. All right. You ain't do this yet. Okay, my bad. All right. So wait. <laughs> Missy Elliott first ever headlining tour will feature Timberland. Busta Rhymes and Sierra. So look, um, this is so. This, the significance of this tour is this is her first headlining tour. She has co-headlined mm-hmm. in the past with uh, Beyonce and Alicia Keys, two other big names. But this is her first headlining tour. Y'all, it's twenty-four stops. It starts on the fourth of July, and That's the dope. name of the tour is called Out of This World. Between her, Chris Brown, and JT, I'm gonna go broke because I'm gonna see all three of them this year. Ooh. Big pregnant in there. Like, what's up, y'all? The tickets gonna sell April twelfth. Drop one of clues bombs for Missy Elliott. Shout out to Missy Elliott. Alvin Gray is doing her biopic titled "The Woman in the Plastic Hefty Bag." <laughs> Yo, shut up, man. What? <laughs> Alvin Gray, don't try. To- <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's just with the mess. Not that last part, y'all, but that's that's just with the mess. All right, don't get a day. Who you giving a donk to? Four after the hour. We need your alcohol. Michael to come to the front of the congregation. Let's oh talk. Let's God. talk Grace this morning, y'all. Okay. All right. All right. We'll get to that next. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. 
You're checking out The Breakfast Club. Damn, the hee-haw again. <laughs> it's time for Donkey of the Day. <laughs> I'm not even trying to be Donkey today no more. They should be embarrassed by what they already did. I I'm not making new people do these things. Called Donkey of the Day, and it really caught me off guard. Damn, Charlemagne, who got the Donkey of the Day today? Well, Donkey of the Day for Tuesday, April 9th, goes to the good brother Gerard Carmichael, my Carolina brethren. Great guy, okay? He's in North Carolina, I'm South Carolina. But today's lesson uh, is about grace. This is a teachable moment. See, yesterday we was on Breakfast Club, and uh, Jess Hilarious was reporting in Jess with the Mess, uh, you know, a conversation about Gerard Carmichael and a conversation he had uh, about Dave Chappelle. And mm -hmm. Gerard Carmichael called Dave Chappelle an egomaniac, okay? According to Gerard, he said Dave wanted to apologize Publicly, he wanted uh, Gerard to apologize publicly for criticizing his anti-trans legacy. Yes, Gerard told Esquire magazine that him and Dave had tension because Gerard criticized Chappelle jokes about the transgender community. Gerard said, Chappelle, do you know what comes up when you Google your name, bro? That's what Carmichael, uh, you know, asked during the GQ magazine interview referring to you know, Dave's comments about trans people. He says, that's the legacy. Your legacy is a bunch of opinions on trans... It's an odd hill to die on. And it's like, hey, bro, who the F are you? Who do you F? What do you like to do? Because he says Dave doesn't get personal in his comedy, which I disagree with. Mm. Now, I asked Just Hilarious, should comedians mm. criticize other comedians like this? Because if you are a comedian, you know, more than likely you are going to offend somebody or some community at some point. It's impossible to not step on those landmines, especially in 2024, unless you're just completely safe. And you can be safe or you can be great, but you can't be, you know, both at the same time. So the reason I felt like Gerard, you know, should show Chappelle or any other comedian grace is simply because at some point you will offend. And lo and behold, not 12 hours after me saying that, <laughs> Gerard Carmichael was all over the internet because of a joke made on his new HBO series, Gerard Carmichael Reality Show. Let me read you the headline from TMZ before I play you the audio. Gerard Carmichael, slavery, race play joke, stirs backlash, the self-hate is cringe. Let's <laughs> listen to the joke. I sometimes joke to him that like our relationship is like that of like, a slave and the master son who like teaches me how to read by candlelight. Yeah, he groans too, cause he's a good person. He doesn't like that joke. I like that joke. That's my burden. I think that's hilarious. Y yes, sir. <laughs> Marie Antoinette, sir. I don't know what that is. You know, that's uh, it's a joke. That's for me. Gerard, do you know what comes up when you Google your name, bro? <laughs> That's the legacy. Your legacy is a bunch of opinions on role-playing slavery with your white boyfriend. It's an odd penis to die on. Do you see how quickly those tables can turn? Mm -hmm. Okay, this is why I don't understand, you know, comics coming at other comics. I'm not a comic, but there should be some type of rules about comics, criticizing other comics. And even if it's not an unwritten rule, you know, just you as a comic should be like, I don't like Dave's jokes, but publicly adding on you know to a pile on of another comic as a comic mm -hmm. to me is lame especially when you know people are saying that the comic is being offensive you know now, now, now what if dave came out and started you know criticizing gerard for his jokes and said he was offended about you know the role playing slavery with his white boyfriend joke it's it, you know it's dave Chappelle we talking about here <laughs> what you can't suck anything pause yeah that's what it's saying Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, okay, I'm just saying, what if Dave came out and talked about you role-playing slavery? That would change your Google searches tremendously, okay? You cannot like the joke, but comedians should be entitled to make the joke, and you may even be entitled to say that's not funny. But to act offended publicly as a comedian, you know what I'm saying, and tell a publication that that's Dave's legacy now? No one is not, by the way. There is a lot of things that come to mind about Dave's legacy when it comes to comedy. And trans jokes is not at the top of my list. Okay, not even not even remotely. Gerard, I love you, but you should focus on building your own legacy because I'm not sure you have one yet. Okay, you're building. I know you have had all the specials and the TV shows and movies, all of that. But what is the comedy legacy of Gerard Carmichael? Yeah. What is the legacy of Gerard Carmichael as a comedian? Something for us to ponder. Okay, but in the meantime, please... Everyone out there, remember to give grace. Okay, it's easy to give grace when you recall how much 
you may need it one day. Mm. Please give Gerard Carmichael the sweet sounds of the Hamiltons. Oh, now you are the donkey mm. of the day. All right. I, I like that. Mm-hmm. That was the first one in a long time that I've liked. Okay. Thank yeah. you. And I love Gerard Carmichael as well. Yeah. But I love that donkey. Your stamp of approval means a lot to me. Absolutely. Thank you. It yes. should. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you for that donkey of the day. Now, when we come back, let's open up the phone lines. 800-585-1051. We were talking behind the scenes and Charlamagne was telling us that Jess Hilarious does not like to cook. I never said that. What? I did not say that. That's not even true. Yeah, you didn't even say this. You wait till I walked out the room to say this behind the scenes. So this this comes from uh, uh, something that came out yesterday. It said this oh. new generation of women don't ever cook breakfast. They don't get up till three. Now, first of all, I did say that, but I said that because I was joking. Because uh, okay. you do like to cook a lot. Thank you very much. Yes. Yeah. I was they gonna... asked, should that be a topic? And I said, yes, that's great because Jeff don't like to cook. See? I was joking. Okay. See, I heard it. But he, yeah, he, he talking about his own wife. He's not talking about his sister. You're not talking about, yeah, because she don't like to cook. She That's like to a take lie. Y'all. Don't even tell that lie. Yeah, right. Where well, you want to come Wednesday I'm then? Where you want to come Wednesday? Yeah, that's well, if she yeah. cook. But, what, that's but right. then I get, right. okay, yeah, you can come yet. Yeah, no, because you scared to answer. Because <laughs> she's going to be like, no. <laughs> that's I ain't not true. She we cooks go, all the time every We can day. go to the rodeo inn. She lying. Like, I don't have time. She's lying. They always want to take me to a restaurant with the inn at the end. I'm like, why do y'all go to these motels to eat? Like, what is wrong with y'all? So the question is, 800-585-1051. not true. What are your that lie. What are your thoughts? <laughs> Do women don't like to cook now? I love to cook. I cook all the time. In fact, that's why that's why I'm gaining a little weight now in this pregnancy because I'm not eating out no more. I'm not going to Saddle River Ends in them. I'm I'm eating at home. I make and I make good food. It's hard. It's, a, it's hard to get an appointment at Saddle River, and it's very hard to get a, a reservation there. But anyway. right for you and your family, Ooh, but not for me. <laughs> Anyway, I don't go nowhere to eat like that. I I really love home cooked meals, I'll, and so do Chris. And y'all can ask him if y'all feel like I don't cook. No, she and cooks. my son, she's, yeah, she just cooks a lot. But if somebody here, a young gal that mm-hmm. works here at the station, yeah, just sent out a text. What's the problem? Why do I gotta cook? Oh my god, we'll bring her in. Okay, after, after these. <laughs> so what is the question? What are we asking people this morning? Why is okay? Because look, I see what you're talking about, and it was like. Women are not home driven anymore Correct. because they're so focused on their business. In Why the does cooking a meal Correct. have to be so home driven? Why does that make you home driven? That's literally you just providing a meal for yourself or your family. Mm-hmm. What is just why? Why does it have to be even deemed in the category of like home driven? You can be a a, a hard working woman and still right. come home and cook and clean. Right. What's the problem? Well, By discuss. the way, I'm gonna be honest with you. I don't, oh yeah, we'll talk about when we come back. But I don't know none of those women. All the women I know like to cook. Yeah. Well, let's discuss when we come back. We want to know your thoughts. Eight hundred five eight five one zero five one is the Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. It's topic time. Call 800-585-1051 to join into the discussion with The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Jess Hilarious, Charlemagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. Now, if you're just joining us, uh, this was trending yesterday. It was a post that said the new generation of women don't ever cook breakfast because they don't wake up until 3. Dang. That's where this conversation is mm. coming from. 800-585-1051. And we're asking, why do a lot of women don't like to cook? That's crazy. Waking up at 3 is a crime. That's right. You on mm. drugs. You ain't brush your teeth in this 3 o'clock. Oh, on drugs. You definitely If you sleep until 3 o'clock in the afternoon, you, all you on dope. But when I was doing drugs, I don't care. I was still waking up at like 11. Not 3 o'clock. Mm. You know, because... Sometimes drugs do make you a little tired. Depends what kind of drug, though, now. You, you, was, weed you, weed uh, ain't no drug, Jess. Okay. I'm All talking right. about drugs, like dope. Hard drugs. Yes. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I feel you. I ain't, I don't know what that's like. <laughs> <laughs> so we're asking 800-585-1051. What are your thoughts? What, what do you think about that? I think it's crazy. I, I do uh, I do agree that a lot more women feel that way. I mm-hmm. mean, they, they have taken the approach like, okay, I don't have to cook. I'm so caught up in my career and mm-hmm. work and everything, and I don't want... A man to get in the wrong mindset about me, like I'm not a homemaker. I'm, but baby, you literally can cook. How would you cook if you? How would you eat if you didn't have a man? You know, would you just go out every night? Mm-hmm. You know, because I I started off with me cooking for myself, and then I had a child, cook for him. I don't care. Every man that I've had, I've cooked for. It's it's 
it's something that I like to do. Cooking is very therapeutic. And then mm -hmm. it's a way that I take care of myself. It's like a survival thing. I see my mother do it, I'm going to do it. Mm. I don't yeah. understand why it's like that. Yeah, I don't know any women who don't cook. Yeah. Like all the women that are in my life cook. Now, are some of those women over 40? Yeah, mm -hmm. you know, but I know them in their 30s too and they enjoy cooking. So yeah. I don't know who these women are they speak of. And then yeah. food is made with love, Envy. Absolutely. Like it's made with love. So... You can appreciate a home cooked meal made by a woman, you know what I'm saying, more than you can at a, an inn, mm -hmm. at a restaurant inn. Mm -hmm. You know, so. I will say this, you know, Charlemagne always jokes that we were born in the 1900s. When me and my wife first started, you know, dating and we when we first got married, we could only order out two things. You could only get pizza and Chinese food. Those are the only two things that would deliver. So we had to cook. She cooked every night. Jesus. That was the thing. Poor New York. Yeah, the okay. same. My Poor wife, my wife mm. always cooked too. I mean, my wife's dad, uh, you know, one of his side hustles, he's a caterer, so he, she always knew how to cook. She was right. always, you know, in the kitchen. That's her thing. We've been together 26 years. She, I usually she's do the breakfast. Not cooked. Yeah, I usually do the breakfast. My wife does the dinner. Mm -hmm. That's that's how oh, it's so always been. That that's what Chris does. He cooks breakfast because I think that's probably the only thing he can cook. And and he, but he takes that on all the time. He'll make breakfast. I make lunch. I make dinner. Mm -hmm. That's why I love to see like Ari Fletcher, Money Bag uh, Yo's girlfriend. Yep. she cook. Oh, well, wife. She cooks. I love to see young girls cook. Like when they get it in in the kitchen, I'm like, okay, girl, yes, because you can still be fly businesswoman, right. you know, and still cook meals, and it looks good. You think uh, it's a regional thing? You think like you know more women that's like down south, towards the southern regions? That's what that's what that's what they do. I think so. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Just, I think so. Yeah. And I think so. I, I think a, a lot of the reason why is one, I think the food tastes better in the south, and I think up here mm -hmm. there's so many options. There's like yeah, no lie, bodega and and. and fast food spots on every There's corner so much food yeah. around here where you can just get all over New York like so you can never ever be hungry in New York yeah Correct. but it ain't great yeah no it's yeah. cool it's you fast, know what I'm saying fast, like, yeah. it ain't great food I got you well we got Jasmine on the line Jasmine good morning hello hey Jasmine what's Jazz. your thoughts yeah so my, I feel like there's too much being put, like, put on women these days. Back then, women stay home with their kids. Like, now times have changed. Like, we're working. We have businesses. We're also taking care of the household. Like, we're just doing a lot more. I feel like as long as we're making dinner, like, I make dinner. I feel like as long as I make dinner, that's fine. I don't want to hear no complaints about breakfast. <laughs> Look, I get it. <laughs> I get it. Thank you, Jasmine. Show guys say that, no though. Like, I don't want to hear no complaints about breakfast. Teresa, good morning. Good morning. Hi, DJ Envy, Charlamagne, Jess. Peace. Hey, girl. How you feeling? I'm good. I think there's just a disconnect when it becomes like a designated duty for women to cook. Yeah. Because I cook. I've been married for 20 years, but I don't like cooking. Oh. Why? What you don't like about it? Dishes? Um, well, It's a chore. Cooking when it feels a like a chore, I, I don't like cooking. I mean, you know, I work full time. I go to school full time. And it feels like a chore. I don't want to do it. Is it more so the cleanup after the cooking, or is it like just cooking in general? It's the cleanup. That's what I'm talking Definitely. about. So that's what you make them clean up, girl. You cook, and then they, because that's how yep. I do. I cook, uh, and then and, Chris and cleans. That's true, but and you know what? The pandemic made it a bit worse because with, if someone asks me what's for dinner, I think it's a trigger. I feel like it's a trigger. Mm. Why is that a trigger? <laughs> Especially if you're the person that they used because, to cooking. <laughs> Because it's the decision behind it. It's the, okay, yeah. let me not make what we did last week. Like, yeah. it's a lot. I get what she's saying. I get what she's saying. But I think it would be easier for her if somebody offered to clean up after. Because Ash and yep. Chris will clean after mm -hmm. I cook. Like, all right, so Miami's responsible for deciding what is for dinner, cooking it, plating it, serving it, you know, giving it to y'all. And then y'all are responsible for dishes and cleaning off the table and everything, putting everything away. That's beyond fair. That's but fair. I, I, yeah. I would say this, though, you know, Cooking just takes a lot of time and a, a lot of effort, though. Yeah. Like if you're preparing the food, if you're, mm. you know, like when when my wife make, makes oxtail, mm. it's a it's a long Jesus. ass Sounds time. Like, like mm. you know what I mean? And it, it takes a lot of time, and it, and it takes and, and if you got kids and your kids got activities and you got to work, a lot of people can't do all that and dedicate the time to actually cook. Yeah, and then it depends on how many kids. And the, that's a lot going on. You right. That's like a team. Be right. And then, you know, so I get it. More power to give because crazy. That's crazy. Well, 800-585-1051. We're asking what's your thoughts. A post went out yesterday that said, these new women don't cook. Y'all don't wake up until 3 o'clock. What's your thoughts? Let's discuss. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. If y'all talking about it, you know we talking about it. It's Topic Time. 
Call 800-585-1051 to join into the discussion with The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. We are The Breakfast Club. Now, if you're just joining us, there was a post yesterday that said, these new women don't be cooking. They don't even be waking up till after three. So we're asking, what's your thoughts on this? <laughs> Jess said, I'm a cooker. I cook. Yes. You cook every day, Jess? Yes. I, well, well, listen now. Hold on. I know I die. But I do try to. Like, five days out the week, I do. You know, but sometimes, like, on the weekends, I'll order stuff. Mm-hmm. I, I will. But... Five days out the week, yes, I have to. This is a uh, other influencer on TikTok. Her name is Nara Smith. She makes everything from scratch. Mm-hmm. I'm talking about cookies. She'll get the dough, the chocolate chips. Mm-hmm. She makes jelly, like peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. She'll make the jelly. She'll make the peanut butter, and she'll make the damn bread. And wow. how long that take though? That that's a little too long. Know. Time. But see, it's compiled and sped up, so we have no idea. But this is what this girl does, right. you know. And also, Ja Nice. She she's also young, not a baddie, you know. Mm-hmm. Nice. I mean, uh, under forty. Has a child, all that. Betty, listen, be cooking, whipping it up. Sierra Glam Shop, you know, Prima Donna. These girls really be in the kitchen busting down, getting busy. Also, gotcha. to be fair, when they say new women, what are they talking about? Are they talking like new generation? New are generation. they talking young women? New generation. Are they talking women. people who identify as women? Cause, oh, that's a good question. Because if it's people who identify as women, you got to give them some time. You know, you give them some time to keep transitioning. They will identify as a chef soon. Just give them a minute. Yeah, I'm, I'm not yeah. sure. Now, you wanted B, to bring in... I don't in, know. Oh, B, where B at? B, come here, B. Yeah, B was in here talking about... Um, B's one of these new women. B, how old are you, B? Uh-uh, she come is here, not B. new. She is 28 years old. How old are you? 28. 28? Yeah. Okay, you newish. Been a woman since scratch. I know, that's right. <laughs> so what, so what happened? I think that... See, like you mentioned Nara Smith. Who got time to be making anything from scratch? Oh, my God. Damn, Nara B. Smith and them. That, and that's nice. That's good, but not me. And you what, Dominican, right, B? Yeah, exactly. So look, I go home, I go to my mom's house, and there's food already. But that's See, what I but you thought. a spoiled bread. You still exactly. get your mom still cooks for you. Exactly. So why I gotta cook? Why I gotta go home? And but cook? I thought Dominican women cook like that was. Like, they do, but not this Dominican woman right so here. You don't cook nothing. <laughs> I do. I make my own food. But what you make? Like you know the basic. What's the rice basic? and peas and what? <laughs> rice and beans <laughs> and empanadas. Eggs. I wait. I don't even make empanadas. That's my friend. But okay. Who got time to be cooking? But see, that's different because she can just go. She said every day she goes to her mom's house and it's already food made. Yeah, it's so food why made. would she? That's, well, that's she a got different a circumstance. Man, she got to right. take a man to her mom's house. She got to cook too. Oh, my God. Okay. Jesus. But don't, it should be 50 50. Yeah, yeah, it should be 50 50. So we're when you get a man, cook. you'll start cooking. Yeah, we're going to cook. But what, you we're should be cook. practicing now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you should be practicing. A little trial and error. She don't care. She's talking about I'm going to give it a try. I'm going to give it a try, I promise. Okay. She not. Thank you. Yeah, I'm not. We got Angie on the line. Angie, good morning. Hey, good morning. What up, though? Hey, what up, though? Detroit. What's your thoughts? Yeah, yeah. Detroit to Houston all day. So. My thoughts on this topic. So, I'm a mom, and I'm a wife, and I also work. I enjoy cooking. I just think that now, in the current state, in the current economic situation, moms is working 40 hours a week. Mm. So, even if we do like to cook, Mm -hmm. and I can speak to my own experience. Like, I'm I'm at work right now. I'm here at 7, I get off at 6, and then the expectation be to cook dinner every single day. That's a lot. That's a lot. And... Sometimes men don't really understand that. My husband does because he we switch it up. But to go to work all day long and then come home and then cook and then go grocery shopping, it's exhausting. So I think you making think you, you, you making a lot of sense. You see, but 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 I don't know because I don't know about your mama. My mom used to cook every night. My mom worked yeah. nine to five. She'd be home, dinner ready by six thirty, seven o'clock yeah. every night. Mm. And it was like no choice. No like choice. My mama used to do it. She used so to with my kids. mother yeah. did it too. My mother did too because my dad worked afternoons. And to this day, I call my mom and I say, I don't know how she did it. And I'm very thankful. Mm-hmm. That was a different breed of person. But also, my mom didn't have to work. It wasn't required for her to have to bring in money. Nowadays, it's a lot of 50 50 men that want you to bring in half. Now, nah, my mom so works. Yeah, no- hell yeah. <laughs> my mama works. My, my mom, 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 mom works. Your mother. My mom yeah, works. Your nah, my mom yeah. works. Not yeah. only that, if I go to my mom's house right now, yeah. I don't care what my mom's doing, she will stop and cook. That's exactly If I say, Mom, mom I'm hungry, she's going to stop and cook me a meal. You right? know what we should ask our parents? Mm-hmm. I bet you it's a question you never asked. What's that? If you have a mom who worked 40 hours a week mm-hmm. and came home and kept food on the table, where what areas did she have to sacrifice in? Because mm-hmm. there had to be some. Yeah, there had to be some areas she had to sacrifice in 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 the relationship between her and your dad. Right. In order to be able to do that, there had to be something. Well, yeah. you know, my mama. I don't know about y'all, but my mama had no life. Like there was no outside life. Like she didn't go out with yeah, her friends. No, she, she, talk about. she always was home with she, us. She, she, you really don't know how to speak. With my mama ain't had no life. 
Like, what? Nah, maybe she don't even like outside of her Yo, family. And I'm sitting over like here that. like, my Neva. I know Robin is probably like, excuse me? <laughs> no, but, but she, for real. Mama didn't go out. No, she didn't hang out with her life. friends. No, outside life. Right. She didn't. It was always about her family. And those yeah. are questions that I think that we should all ask our parents because a lot of us don't know our parents before they were our parents. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you don't know the sacrifices they probably made to be yep. your parent, to be somebody's wife, to be I somebody's agree. husband. We don't ever have those conversations with our parents. I think we should. That's right. It'll give, it'll give you a better understanding of what they went through and what we're currently going through now. That's right. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, we got Jess with the Mess coming up. Is there a moral to the story? Or that was the moral? I don't know. Oh. We just yeah, talking. But well, we got Jess with the mess coming up. Yeah, so Aoki is single now. What you mean? She just, I don't know. She she's, she's single now. I think that man wife was like, uh, excuse me, they're telling me that. And then they had to cut it off right there. But we'll get into it when we come back. Okay. All right, we'll get to it next. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Let's get You're to Jessica Mass. Let's that get to Jessica Mass. That's crazy. The news is real. Well, this is Larry's Jessica Robin Moore. Jess don't do no lies. Don't do no lies. She don't spare nobody. Worldwide Jess. Worldwide Mass. On The Breakfast Club. She's a culture shift. She was able to get y'all to see something and understand something that nobody could get you to see. It's time to set it off. So, sources close to Aoki told Page Six that she is now single. So, we don't have any audio of her saying it. I thought that we was... Because she always going live. She's been going live for the last few days. But the rumors of them dating started. Um, Aoki and Victorio Asaf. Um, oh, you know something? I just found it on him. Listen... At first, I, when I reported it, he's the owner of the restaurant group Serafina. Yes. I, mm -hmm. I didn't even know because she was like, What's Serafina? What's Serafina? The restaurant. That's the restaurant group. I didn't even realize that. You mm -hmm. asked what it was. When I did that. He, he really don't be listening. That's so crazy. But you asked, <laughs> when I first reported that her boyfriend was 65 and that he is the uh, restaurant terror, because that's what they call you when you got multiple restaurants, he was like, What, what is Serafina? I never did said Did you say that yesterday? That. Did you yeah, say that he yesterday? Did. He didn't no. say that. No. That's crazy. Now I be lying. First, somebody else was lying on him. Now I'm now lying. Be, now you be lying. Child, please. <laughs> anyway, Simmons referred to um, a soft as her boyfriend multiple times, but recently she just said it ended. Now, look, I thought that the guy's wife might have found out or whatever, mm -hmm. but and it turns out he was married. He's not married anymore. He got a divorce in 2021. Right. But he was married, mm -hmm. um, and they um, they divorced. He was single or whatever, as, as far as we know, but I don't know why it ended so abruptly, child. But um, bring back shaming women about catching worms. I maybe. was born in 1978. <laughs> I came from the era when you hear older women tell them young girls out there with them old men, you're gonna catch worms now. <laughs> or maybe she ain't get her creeps. Because she really wanted them she crepes. She wanted the crepes. Crepes really is old worms. Maybe she wanted <laughs> She really wanted them crepes. I think her mom and dad was on her ass when she got Absolutely. back. Absolutely. Yeah. You can actually see that, um, yeah, her mother definitely did mm -hmm. post something insinuating that. So, yeah, may maybe so, you know. Or maybe her friends was like, girl, come on, we all going out and we bringing out dudes. And she was like, all right, I'm going to bring my dudes. Like, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> no, we don't need no, 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 no chaperone. No, 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 no. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> you know, it could have it ended anyway, mm -hmm. but I'm glad that she's... Safe. Take his ass to IHOP. You get free pancakes, though. <laughs> that is true. Right. And the movies. That's okay. Right. That's we'll see right. a discount. That's right. Hello. Yeah. All right. Um, Black-owned children's bookstore in Raleigh moving after threats. This so is sad. Um, I know Liberation Station Bookstore, North Carolina's first Black-owned children's bookstore, is moving out of downtown Raleigh less than a year after it opened. Um, Liberation Station opened on June tenth, twenty twenty-three. Dang! Shout out to them. That's what's up. Mm -hmm. um, but this is this is crazy uh, the owner victoria scott miller said since september we faced numerous threats following the opening of our store some we brushed off while others included a disturbing phone call detailing what our son langston wore when he was at the shop alone wow um yeah she uh she said that her and her family took a break from operating the bookstore for about two weeks after after the threat started her son is 13 and she operates the store with her son and her husband she said her, her son by a 13 year old in the store by himself yeah Yep, 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 and that's when she received the call. Basically, like, they was watching. They be sitting there watching the store. Um, because we're in the business of children, we're responsible for their safety, Scott Miller said. But he was in there alone, which was crazy. Um, on Tuesday, Scott Miller said the bookstore would remain operational until April 13th. And um, also said that the bookstore 
will go back to the drawing board to reassess and redefine what will be needed in their next location. You know, this is when you need a, a first line of defense, yeah. you know, in certain communities, because what these people actually need is security. But I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm sure they can't afford mm -mm. the 24 hour security that them and the store need, because mm -hmm. even when the store is not open, mm -hmm. people will try to vandalize the store, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. But if we had an organization, you know, in the hood that could hold them down, mm -hmm. right? And send threats back if need be, yeah. right, you know, then, you know, things things would be a lot different because they shouldn't have to close their business All right. because of an anonymous threats from people. And even for that two weeks that they had to, that they brought it to an abrupt halt, like, mm -hmm. you know what, we're just going to resume in two weeks, take two weeks off. I'm sure that hurt their business too because they were course. successful after opening. You know what I mean? So I that's just sad. It's like, what do you do? But yeah, I hope their new location, I'm sending healing energy and all there you of go. success, more success because hopefully they have more than one bookstore open. Okay, black-owned books, so I do like that. And it's for children's books. Mm -hmm. That's what we need more of around here. All right, Remy Carter is now the youngest female artist ever on Hot 100, claiming record from Big Sis Blue Ivy. So look, remember when Blue Ivy de debuted seven years ago in 2019, thanks to her feature on Brown Skin Girl? Mm -hmm. Now, Remy has surpassed her sister um, as the youngest charting female artist to reach Hot 100 on um the Cowboy album. Wow. That debuted at number 42 on the Hot 100. Um, Also, oh, so clap it up, drop a clues bomb for those sisters. Yeah, yeah. Let me uh, let me hear the audio. Hello, voice on the on the uh, country record. Keep, I know that. Keep that's the money in the family. Just keep it yeah. in the family. I love that. And isn't it just amazing to know that Remy has no idea what's going on? Nope. And, exactly. And just breaking <laughs> records just and uh, making history. Don't even know what's happening. They're like, Remy, you the number, whatever, whatever. And she's right. like, okay, turn bubble gum. Like, like, <laughs> yeah. like, just still, just living her little life, Louis. right? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mom. Right. But that is amazing. That is so amazing. And just like when Blue was real young, she was on uh she was on I think the song was called Blue. That was our first song that she was on on Beyonce's album. And that was just that was amazing that both of her yeah. kids are able to receive these, you know, achievements and accolades so young. Also, real quick, Beyonce surpasses uh one hundred career hot one hundred hits, thanks to Cowboy album, with twenty three songs charting from the album on Billboard 100, she ups her career total from 85 entries to 106. Congrats to B. So Have you heard that? Amazing. Did y'all listen to that? No, not all of it. Not yet. Not yet. She becomes the 17th artist mm -hmm. and only the third and only the third woman to have 100 or more song songs hit. She yeah. got a lot of hits is what you're trying to yeah, say. She got but a lot of, this it's, album added a lot more Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. When I'm reading and I'm already struggling, mm -hmm. I don't need you to do that. Thank okay. you very much. All right. Because okay. I'm because I'm I'm well, about to put it on mind. the people typing. Okay. But I don't need you to do that. Okay. All right. Now that's it. Worry about that you didn't know what Serafina was yesterday. That's Thank not Thank you true very either. much. And it is true. <laughs> no, it's not. We have the footage and we will roll it after this. But it that's just the mess for the third hour. All right. But, but the, one of the most important things from the Beyonce album, uh, you know, that I saw was the fact of all the young black country artists that she empowered. Mm -hmm. Amazing. You know what I mean? Like yeah. that is incredible. Yes. All right. Yes. All right, salute to Beyonce. Congratulations. All right, let's get to the People's Choice Mix. We'll be back at The Breakfast Club. Good morning. You're checking out The Breakfast Club. Good morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, Jess Hilarious, Charlemagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. Now, uh, I just want to say, again, salute to everybody out there. Uh, me and my wife's podcast is back after about a year and a half. It's uh, the Casey Crew podcast. And we talk about everything relationship, the good, the bad, the ugly. And we just dive into everything that couples are going through, good or, or bad or indifferent and raising kids and raising a family and all that. So today, the first episode drops. We were on a hiatus for over a year because honestly, we were moving. Uh, yeah. We didn't have a nanny and we got kids. Yeah. So now these kids are back in school. So now we get back to record the podcast. So salute to uh, my wife, Gia. Make That's sure you uh, listen and watch and download and all that good stuff. The Casey Crew podcast. When Casey is the first uh, episode? It came out today. Came out today. All right. Came out today. I saw the bloopers that you had posted. She was she was already sick of you already. She always gets sick of me. Like after a while, she just like you. You get sick of me too. <laughs> yeah, she say I know, and you say the real J. She's like, well, who, right? Like who's the fake one? <laughs> Jesus, that was so funny and yeah. cute to me. Yeah, so all right. And I, I want to salute to Alice Randall, man. Alice Randall is a professor at Vanderbilt University and today uh, her memoir My Black Country A Journey Through Country Music's Black Past Present and Future is available in bookstores everywhere it is the latest release off my book imprint uh, Black Privilege Publishing so all of y'all out here having all these conversations about Beyonce and you know country music and black artists and country music you don't know nothing about it or maybe some of y'all do but if you don't 
You can always learn more uh, or learn something by getting My Black Country, a journey through country music's black past, present, and future, available everywhere you purchase books now. Go well, get it. Did you already read it? Yeah. That's what's been up. Read it. I read it when it was a manuscript. Oh, because oh, it was printed by... My book in print. Your, oh, right. Now. Exactly. That's the real promotion behind yes. this. Okay, great. I said that already. That's amazing. You ain't even hear me. Nope. See what I'm saying? Yes. So, My Black Country, available everywhere. You buy books now. That's what's up. Yes. All right. When we come back, positive notice of Breakfast Club. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, Jess Hilaria, Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. It's time to get up out of here. Yes. You got a positive note? I do, man. Uh, I just want to say the most valuable thing you can make is a mistake. You can't learn anything from being perfect, and ain't none of us perfect anyway. Have a blessed day. I like that. Very sweet and simple. Is that yours? No. Today. No. Today it's it not is. His. Today I it is. I told y'all when this, you can tell when it's a quote that he stole. I love it. All right, y'all. <laughs> Breakfast Club, bitches. Y'all finished or y'all done?